Hello and welcome to the Horror Game Beginner's Guide, Buying Guide. Think of this as a large recommendation video where you can get a starting point and then follow it in any direction you please based on your preferences. This is only covering games I've made reviews of and there'll be a long list of reviews in the description so you can see more in-depth takes on the games. These are only games I'd recommend. I might mention some games I haven't covered but I won't recommend things I've not played myself. I'm going to try and cover as many bases as possible for people who only have specific consoles, but the best place to play horror games is going to be PC because of the thriving indie community and vast back catalogue of games, so expect several games for PC players. So what's the best starting point for any horror game fan? And I asked around and thought about it myself, and I think probably the best starting point is the Amnesia Collection. I think this is such a good starting point not only because The Dark Descent alone is one of the best horror games ever made and it influenced a lot of games that followed it, but also because it allows you to branch out quite substantially from there. The Dark Descent is a game where you play as Daniel, a man who consumed an amnesia potion and has awoken alone in a castle where a letter he wrote himself has told him to murder a man named Alexander to redeem himself. The game has no combat, you can only run and hide, but it has several survival elements with inventory management and the way that you have to manage lamp oil and tinder boxes or you'll be left in the dark. Its opening has a focus on atmosphere and the atmosphere becomes more and more intense and grows eventually to become overwhelming. It's gory and disturbing, it has plenty of chase sequences and terrifying enemies, a few jump scares, its story is very rewarding and has multiple endings, and its puzzles aren't complicated but still require some thought. The collection is available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch for the prices on screen and contains all three games. The collection isn't available on PC but you can get Amnesia The Dark Descent and Justine together for around slightly less, and Machine for Pigs costs the same as The Dark Descent if you're interested in it. However, if you do get The Dark Descent on PC, you can download custom story mods for free which opens the door to loads of great fan-made content as well. Justine is a much shorter experience and features permadeath if you fail, though it's largely the same basic features that the main game provides. And finally, Amnesia and Machine for Pigs is a much more story-focused game than the others and sees you thrown forwards in time to the late 1800s as an industrialist who's haunted by his children he can't seem to catch up to, and the strange presence of pigs in this darkened version of Victorian London. This really covers a lot of bases, and depending on what thing you like the most about it, you can go in different directions, which is what we will be doing. First up, there's combat. If you found that Amnesia left you with a desire to fight back, then these are games that are more about fighting enemies and the horror derived from within. First up, there's Condemned Criminal Origins, which follows an FBI agent as they're set up and out to track down a deranged killer in a city where everyone seems to be cracking up and turning to violence. The game's combat is incredibly visceral thanks to its more melee-based system, where you can take items from the environment to defend yourself with. The story is pretty engaging and its atmosphere is pretty great throughout. The scary moments come from the combat usually, and some really great scripted sequences. There's plenty of gory crime scenes to explore and disturbing things to see. Criminal Origins was released on PC and Xbox 360. The physical versions are slightly cheaper in the UK and the average cost for an average copy is on screen. The digital version was released on Steam and the Xbox version is fully backwards compatible and available on both the current and Xbox 360 store. Condemned 2 follows a similar fighting system but the game isn't quite as well regarded as the original. The game isn't backwards compatible and only available on PS3 and Xbox 360. Hey, wait. Up next is the Fear series, which is more of a first-person shooter with horror elements, far more combat-heavy, but still has some very spooky environments and jump scares. You play as the point man and the story is mostly about corporate corruption and the disturbing experiments into the paranormal. The shooting is very satisfying with bullet time and intelligent enemies. 
Fear was released for PC, PS3, and Xbox 360, and there's a lot of different physical releases for the different DLC combinations on PC, with gold editions and others. The console version seems more expensive for the base game. The Xbox 360 disc version is backwards compatible with the Series X and S. Digitally, on Steam at least, you can't buy Fear on its own without buying Fear 2 and 3 as well as the original game's DLC. Fear doesn't seem available on Xbox at all anymore, but it is available surprisingly on PlayStation Plus Premium as a bonus. Fear 2 is the sequel and still a pretty good game, though again, not quite as well regarded. You can get Fear 2 for the PC, PS3 and Xbox 360. The disc versions are a lot cheaper than the original game, but the physical game on PC is a Games for Windows Live game, which means it might have issues, because Games for Windows Live always seem to have issues. But the Xbox 360 version is fully backwards compatible with current gen. Digitally, it's only on Xbox and Steam. On Steam, it's also available in the same bundle as the previous game, and it's surprisingly expensive on Xbox from what their store says. Now we have Dead Space. Dead Space is a third-person action horror game set in the far future, and it takes place on a mining ship in Shimera where you play as Isaac Clarke, who's been tasked with repairing the ship when things go horribly wrong. It does have some resource management, but most of the time it's about defeating everything in front of you with boss battles and waves of enemies. Dead Space was released once again on PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360, and it's roughly the same price on all of them. It's backwards compatible on Xbox, but also free on EA Play if you have that. Digitally, it's available on Steam, the PlayStation 3 store, where I only noticed the Ultimate Editions, which are oddly the same $24.99 in pounds and dollars, and it's the same for Xbox, with the current Xbox store showing both regions at $14.99 for the base game. There's also the 2023 remake of the game that retains everything about the original with a fresh coat of paint, and some minor changes that only really improve the game. It came out on PS5, Series X, and PC. Physical prices are far cheaper, and the digital prices are on screen. Dead Space 2 is of course the sequel, and really it's the best kind of more of the same, with a lot of variety without changing too much. It's arguably better depending on what aspects you like of Dead Space 1. Dead Space 2 came out for the same systems as the original game, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. There's not a huge difference between them, but the PlayStation 3 version seems slightly more expensive physically. Digital prices aren't far off the first game's prices either. Next up we have Bloodborne. Whilst not strictly a horror game, it does a lot of horror things very well. It's from soft souls like Cosmic Horror, where you fight the creatures of your nightmares in a nightmare world. Its story is mysterious and hard to grasp, but extremely rewarding and deep once you start to get into it. Its combat is not only stressful, but brutally visceral, with blood spraying out of everything you fight. Its horror comes from the experience as a whole, with plenty of horrific things to fight on top of its hard-as-nails boss fights. The game is pretty long and has a DLC that expands it by another few hours, with lots more nasty things to sink your teeth into. The game is sadly a PS4, PS5 exclusive, with digital versions and physical copies around the same price. There's a Game of the Year edition that also includes the Old Hunters DLC, which is also excellent. Resident Evil 4 is one of the more horror-focused, combat-heavy Resident Evil games, and again, whilst utilising inventory management, it requires the player to engage in far more combat than the rest of the series, with main protagonist Leon Kennedy on a mission from the President to save the President's daughter. He travels to rural Europe and encounters a dangerous cult and horrible mutations that slow him down, as well as a series of colourful antagonists and characters. The game isn't terribly frightening, but it is a great deal of fun and stands above the others in the 4, 5, and 6 trilogy of games. The original game is on everything from the GameCube to the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Nintendo Wii, and the HD version is available on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii U, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Series X and S. The PC and Nintendo Switch It's one of the most ported games ever, you can play it anywhere really. The price is varied by system, but arguably the best console versions are the most recent ones since they carry over the best features and graphics from the updated PC version.
In 2023, the game also received a remake, and it's just as good as the original game, and different enough to warrant them being considered different things, with the remake focusing more into the horror than the original. The remake is available on PlayStation 4 and 5 and Series X and S, as well as PC. The game also comes with separate ways for slightly more money, which is a full-on DLC storyline featuring Ada Wong from the main campaign. One of the best deals is Cry of Fear, which is a free game on Steam. It follows troubled teenager Simon, who after being hit by a car awakens in a seemingly empty city filled with nightmarish creatures. What follows is a lot of stressful combat and psychological horror. Enemies scream at you as you go through its dark world. Probably one of the most terrifying games I've ever played, and definitely the best game that you can play for free. And finally, there's Metro 2033, which is a post-apocalyptic first-person shooter that takes place in the dark metro tunnels of Russia. The game is deeply atmospheric and features a lot of nail-biting combat. The game came out for Xbox and PC. The PC version was removed from Steam, and the physical version requires Steam activation, which is always a gamble with used games as to whether it'll still be valid. The Xbox 360 version sadly isn't backwards compatible, and the prices for both are on screen. You can buy the game digitally on the Xbox 360 store, and the prices are on screen. There is a Redux version of the game that's widely available, but sadly fans, including myself, consider it to be a substantial downgrade due to the lack of horror elements that made the original so enticing. Next up are the games that are more about the survival aspect, resource management, staying alive through tough situations. These allow combat, but it's more in self-defense and less about killing everything you see. Following the theme of post-nuclear survival, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is a game that has you play as an unnamed stalker as they travel through an alternate version of the exclusion zone in a post-Chernobyl nuclear disaster timeline. It's very survival and combat heavy, with the slightest mistake resulting in death. It requires you to manage ammo, healing items, armor, food, as well as your radiation levels. The combat is where a lot of the horror lies, with its enemies being not only surprising but deadly. Its atmosphere is very heavy and its semi-open world allows you to explore on your own terms and find things at your own pace, engaging in what combat you deem worthy. The game is available physically on PC and digitally on Steam, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and series consoles. The game has a huge modding community with loads of really well-made mods, as well as other entries in the series with Call of Pripyat being another excellent game, and Clear Sky also being highly recommended if you enjoyed the other two and want more. Being a sequel and a prequel to Shadow of Chernobyl, respectively. Next up is the original Resident Evil trilogy, with all three games being highly recommended B-movie horror. The first game follows Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine as they're chased into the Spencer Mansion by vicious dogs, and find that once they're inside, things are more cryptic than they would seem. Soon people go missing and they're tasked with escaping the mansion. The main attraction of the game is the survival aspect with inventory management as well as game saving management since you only have limited saves. On top of that is the puzzle box environments that require backtracking with newly acquired items to open more and more areas. The combat is slow and clunky, like the movement, but this goes a long way to making the characters feel vulnerable. The first game was released physically on PlayStation 1, PC and Sega Saturn, with the Saturn version being rarer and much more expensive in America. I couldn't get definitive pricing on the PC version since there's so few available. Digitally, it was released on PlayStation 3 on its own in the US, the director's cut in UK, and also in the UK you can get the three-game trilogy, which is a far better deal. Resident Evil 2 follows Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield as they escape the horrors of the zombie apocalypse in Raccoon City into the supposed safety of the Raccoon City Police Department, since Leon is a rookie cop. The game is very similar to the first game, but leans more into B-movie horror with bigger and more dramatic moments. Resident Evil 2 is released on PlayStation 1 again, as well as Sega Dreamcast, Nintendo GameCube, and PC. The Dreamcast version seems generally higher in price now, though it and all the other versions are higher resolution than the PlayStation 1 version. 
The PC version is hard to run on modern systems, but it might be lurking on abandonware sites somewhere. Digitally, again, it's only on PlayStation 3 and the prices are on screen. Resident Evil 3's nemesis follows Jill Valentine as she battles her way through the streets of Raccoon City with some special operatives trying to rescue people and escape Nemesis, a bioweapon sent after the remaining Living Stars members. Resident Evil 3 was also released on PlayStation 1, PC, GameCube and Dreamcast, and their prices are a little lower but still pretty high. Digitally, it's the same as Resident Evil 2 in PlayStation 3 pricing. Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3 of course had remakes with all of them being highly recommended, though very different experiences to the original game, with 1 being the closest to its original. Here are some on-screen prices for the physical and digital versions. Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3 are also really great survival psychological horror experiences with shifting mysterious worlds and dreamlike atmospheres, as well as the pure nightmare that lurks beneath. Silent Hill 1 follows Harry Mason as he searches the town of Silent Hill for his missing daughter Cheryl and gets caught up in the nightmarish otherworld and a strange cult that populates the dreamlike town. It's a staple of psychological horror and only seems to get creepier with age. The psychological horror aspects come from various sources with plenty of unnerving things and unsettling enemies, though combat doesn't always involve fighting every enemy you see. You can run away from most of them, and the resource management is a thing, but it's not as intense as Resident Evil. Silent Hill was released on PlayStation 1 only, and the game is available for purchase digitally on the PlayStation 3 store. Silent Hill 2 is widely considered one of the best horror games ever made and follows James Sunderland as he returns to Silent Hill after receiving a letter from his deceased wife telling him she's waiting for him there. What follows is a town that seems to be punishing him with strange characters also trapped in its psychological web of nightmarish confusion. Silent Hill 2 was released on PlayStation 2, PC and original Xbox. It was included in the Silent Hill HD collection which was released on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. This version was based on the early, incomplete versions of the original games and contains a lot of small things that can sour the experience to some players. Digitally, the game is only available as part of the Silent Hill HD collection, and it's only still available for purchase on the Xbox Store, where it is thankfully fully backwards compatible with Xbox One and Series X and S. Silent Hill 3 follows Heather Mason, Harry's daughter, as strange things befall her as she leaves a shopping mall, with the cult returning from the first game to drag her into their twisted world. Silent Hill 3 is my personal favourite game in the series and I have played it through many, many times. Silent Hill 3 was released on PlayStation 2 and PC, and as the other half of the Silent Hill HD collection, again the only place the game was available digitally. Silent Hill 4 follows Henry Townsend as he wakes up in his apartment to find the door chained shut and he's trapped inside. A large hole appears in his bathroom. Climbing through it takes him to another world. The game is a bigger departure to the series than the first three games and some find it controversial, but it's still a very good game. Silent Hill 4 was released on PlayStation 2, original Xbox, PC, and thankfully ported onto GOG for arguably the best version of the game you can get. Fatal Frame or Project Zero in Europe is a series of games where you can fight back against vengeful ghosts with the camera obscura, which allows you to take pictures of ghosts to exercise them. This means the combat is the main selling point with taking pictures of ghosts usually being unsettling. They usually feature disturbing rituals and the combat, whilst not as challenging in the later games, leans more towards survival and film reel management as well as healing items. The first game follows Miku as she searches the cursed Himura Manor for a missing brother, who in turn was looking for a famous novelist who went missing in the same place. The first game is my personal favourite and available on PlayStation 2 and Xbox, though on the American PlayStation 3 storefront you can get the game digitally for much, much cheaper.
Fatal Frame 2 is widely considered the best game in the series and follows twin sisters Miyu and Mayu as they accidentally pass the threshold and travel into the Lost Village and uncover a ritual tied to twins specifically. The game was released on PlayStation 2, original Xbox, and in Europe it came out for the Nintendo Wii. Again, a digital version is on the PlayStation 3 store for America, but very little in comparison. Fatal Frame 3 ties elements and characters from the first two games and sees Rei, Miku from the first game, and their friend Kei travel into the Manor of Sleep where they see people who were claimed by it. Fatal Frame 3 was only released on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 digitally, and the physical copy is very expensive in comparison to the digital release. Fatal Frame 4 Mask of the Lunar Eclipse follows several characters as they travel to Regetsu Island and experience Moonlight Syndrome and its devastating effects. The game is a bit isolated from the rest of the series, but it's still a great game. It's only available digitally and was released for PC, PS4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One and series consoles. Sadly, the game is no longer available on the Wii U, the system it was designed for, however you can get a physical Japanese release of the game, but it's much less practical. Finally, there's Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water that follows another set of characters as they discover the secrets of the suicides that take place on Mount Takumi. The game is similar to the others with yet more disturbing rituals and creepy ghosts. The game is available for Wii U, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC. You can only get the Wii U version physically since the store has been shut down, but the physical versions are extremely expensive. Alien Isolation allows you to fight back, but mostly in self-defense rather than to wipe out your enemies. It's a stealth game at heart where you play as Amanda Ripley who travels to Sevastopol Station to retrieve a flight recorder left by her missing mother, Ellen Ripley, star of the movie series. And the focus is on using combat to defeat weaker foes since the main antagonist, the alien, is too powerful to defeat outright, with it being with you for the duration of the game's long campaign and where most of the horror comes from. Alien Isolation is very intense and stressful and there's a big focus on survival and crafting as you make healing items and other things to help you survive, making it a true survival horror game. The story does feel drawn out, but if you're a fan of the Alien series then there really is no better game to put you in that role. The game is available on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PC and Nintendo Switch. Amnesia the Bunker is another entry in the Amnesia timeline and doesn't really require playing the other games to enjoy. It's isolated in the series. The game is set during the First World War in a French bunker where you wake up alone. It has a much higher focus on resource management, with light and even sound being something to think about as you play the game. It requires creative thinking to solve puzzles whilst under the constant threat of the monster that follows you around throughout the game. The PC version of course comes with its custom story option for you to play through various community made custom stories. It's a digital only game available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC at these prices. The Evil Within is a third person survival horror where you play as Sebastian Castellanos as he's dragged into a nightmare world where he must defend himself and his co-workers from the ever changing horror that surrounds him. The game encourages stealth and goes pretty hard with survival elements, with lots of traps and ways to die, as well as gauntlets and tough combat sections that put a strain on your resource gathering. The game was released physically on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, as well as PC. It was also released on all of these digitally, but it's around £40, $50 on the PlayStation 3 and 360 stores, making them not really worth it. Its sequel, The Evil Within 2, is an open world horror game that follows Sebastian again as he's dragged back into a new nightmare. It's less gritty and horror focused than the original game and generally easier, but boasts a much larger amount of content. It was released physically for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC.
Resident Evil 7 is a first-person survival horror game where you play as Ethan Winters as he travels to rural Louisiana to find out what's happened to his missing girlfriend, who he receives a mysterious message from. The game is slower with a bigger focus on crafting and resource management, as well as blocking and running away from the various roaming antagonists. Arguably the scariest Resident Evil game. It was released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. The PS4 version also comes with VR support which the game makes fair use of. Resident Evil 8 follows on from the end of Resident Evil 7 with Ethan Winters at the helm again, after his daughter Rose is kidnapped and taken away by series protagonist Chris Redfield. The game is set in a small European village and features a lot of the same gameplay from Resident Evil 7, but with less of a horror focus and more action. The game was released on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox and series consoles, as well as PC. Signalis is an artistic sci-fi survival horror game where you play as Elster, an android who after waking up on a ship crash on an unknown planet, goes searching for a missing partner. The game wears a lot of inspirations very well, it's deep into item puzzles and this works with the limited inventory space to make the game more challenging. The combat is sometimes difficult with enemies that can resurrect later if not put down for good. Its story can be a bit mind-bending, but it's a very, very sad ride to go on regardless. Signalis is available digitally on PC, Switch, PS4 and Xbox One, and it was released physically for Switch and PlayStation 4, but copies are quite rare. Next up we have Lost in Vivo, which plays like Silent Hill. It has the same level of psychological horror as The Dark Descent, you play as someone going into a sewer to rescue their dog, but finds the sewers keep going down and things get more surreal and disturbing. It has a really heavy, dread-filled atmosphere, and the combat lets you defend yourself without ever feeling overpowered. You have to manage ammunition, but health regenerates slowly. It uses a lot of different ideas through its various sections, and whilst it's brief, it keeps you on your toes. There's still puzzle solving, but not a great deal of it. It has a lot of side content and neat things you can find in the game if you dig deeper. The game is available on Steam and its I.O. Darkwood is a top-down cosmic horror adventure where you play as an unnamed man who finds himself stuck in a corrupted wood and can't escape. The game's top-down perspective, punishing difficulty, randomised environments and heavy survival elements, along with the cosmic horror, make this a really deep and immersive game, one of the best I've ever played. I can't recommend Darkwood enough, but it's one that will pivot on your tolerance of the top-down aspects of the game. It's available physically on PS4 and Switch, but it's incredibly rare, but luckily the digital versions are available on Switch, PC, Xbox One and PS4. The Alone in the Dark series has several prominent entries in it being essentially the franchise that started the formula for survival horror. The first game was released in 1992 and follows Edward Carnby and Emily Hartwood as they delve into the Deserto Manor. The game is the grandfather of modern survival horror and so much of what we're used to today stems from it, with many things working the way you'd expect. It's clunky however and exists nowadays more as an interesting point of reference but if you enjoy older games, it's very much still something to experience if you can. The game was released with PC, MS-DOS, iOS, 3DO, FM Towns Marty, and several other home consoles at the time, but the easiest way to acquire it is with the Steam bundle that packs it and its two sequels, as well as a 2008 reboot to the series altogether. On GOG, it's also available with just the two sequels. Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare was the 2001 reboot to the series and follows Edward Carnby and Aline Cedrac as they travel to Shadow Island to unravel the mysteries of the Morton family. The game is more akin to a slow burn Resident Evil with a bigger focus on atmosphere and story. 
It was released on PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, PS2 and PC, as well as the Game Boy Color version that we won't talk about, and more recently on Steam and GOG. And finally, the very recently released Alone in the Dark is the fourth time the series has been rebooted, and this is probably one of the best versions of it since the original, since it takes most of its inspiration from the 1992 game, with its slower puzzle-solving aspects and more cosmic horror story that can be challenging to put together. The combat does have some issues, but it's still a really good game if you prefer slower things. It was released on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC. Siren Blood Curse is a remake of Forbidden Siren for the PlayStation 3. It takes place in a lost Japanese village and it's largely a stealth game since the combat is particularly difficult. It mostly follows linear points through individual missions where you're left in a large area to complete a goal. The horror mostly comes from dealing with the horrific Shibito and its bizarre story. The game is a PlayStation 3 exclusive and it's pretty expensive physically, but all its episodes are available in a bundle on the PlayStation 3 store whilst it remains up. System Shock 2 is a survival horror first-person RPG where you play as a hacker who's awoken on a spaceship that's been commandeered by a rogue AI. Its horror comes from the moody environments and dealing with enemies, and the body horror of their various transformations. The game has a lot of ways to complete it, it's very replayable, but it's old school at heart and if you don't build your character properly, you can run into a dead end. The game is PC only, and whilst the physical copies can be expensive based on if you just want the CD or the whole big box, the digital releases really aren't expensive at all. Murder House is a Resident Evil style survival horror game where you play as Emma, who is part of a film crew filming the house of a famed killer, who are picked off one by one by the Easter Ripper. The game is a new retro with a lot of deliberately old fashioned control styles and its raw imagery and PlayStation graphics really give it an edge. It's good generally and available on PlayStation, PC, Nintendo Switch and Xbox digitally. And finally, there's Nightmare of Decay, which is essentially a first-person Resident Evil. And whilst it's not terrifically terrifying, it's a really fun game with a nice spin on the first-person gunplay to make it feel more slow-paced and intense, not unlike Resident Evil 7 and 8. It's got a lot of references to other games, and it's gory, it contains a lot of side stuff to keep you entertained, and it's not a very long game being able to be completed in just a few hours. The game is available on Steam for a very modest price. If you preferred the puzzle-solving aspects of Amnesia and would generally like less combat, then there's plenty of games that have a higher focus on problem-solving with minimal combat in them. Scratches is a point-and-click horror game about a writer who buys an old house only to find haunting noises bothering him at night and mysterious diaries of the previous occupant. And like Resident Evil, the mansion turns into a puzzle box that you have to unravel to get to the bottom of. For a point and click game, Scratches is very good at still being creepy. The game is PC only and sadly no longer available digitally to purchase, but I've seen it on abandonware sites. The game is available physically for PC though. Madison is a first-person psychological horror game about main character Luca, where you travel around a shape-shifting version of his family's home to discover its and his dark past. The game is mostly focused around solving puzzles and witnessing things as you travel from one place to another. There's a lot of really unnerving sections and its slow burn horror really keeps it going between the terrifying scripted events and the unsettling story. The game is available on PC, Switch, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 digitally, there's also an upcoming PlayStation VR release of the game to look out for, too. Visage is a very comparable game to Madison, and choosing between them is just up to your personal taste. Visage follows Dwayne as he walks around his house and discovers the history of its previous occupants by travelling into mind-bending scenarios that represent the strange and disturbing lives they led. 
The game has several randomised elements and is very puzzle heavy to the point where it's a little obtuse, but it's still a supremely disturbing game. It's available digitally on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Iron Lung is a bleak first person game where you play as a convict trapped in a rusty submarine with no porthole, tasked with scouting a blood ocean on an isolated moon in a universe where the stars have faded out. The puzzle aspect is tied in very closely with the horror with the player having to traverse the ocean around the submarine using only the proximity alarm and the map. Then use the submarine's camera to take pictures of specific locations. It's an utterly fantastic game that uses very little to deliver a nerve wracking experience. The game is available on Steam. Detention and Devotion are two games made by Red Candle Games and are both excellent psychological horror, with both taking place in Taiwan and following their culture and religious beliefs. It makes them both very unfamiliar but refreshing from the perspective of the Western audience. Detention follows Rei as a disaster strikes her school and she finds herself seemingly alone in this alternate version of her school and area, with reality breaking down around her as she travels from moment to moment, recalling her life and understanding the cause of her guilt. It takes place during 1960s Taiwan, which historically was a very dark time for the country. It's a point and click game essentially and works with a series of abstract puzzles and out of the box thinking to get through its difficult story. The game is only available digitally on PC, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. Devotion is a first person psychological horror game where you play as Taiwanese screenwriter Du Feng Yu as they struggle with family issues and personal grief in the 1980s. The game follows the same sort of abstract puzzles as Detention but leans more into set pieces. It's quite story heavy, though that story is excellent. The game is now available for play... The game is now only available from their website. The Mortuary Assistant is a game where you have to figure out the demon possessing you by going through the macabre process of preparing bodies. It's a balance between the almost non-stop scripted events and scary moments and trying to figure out what they mean to identify the demon to complete the ritual. It requires quite a bit of thought and deduction since it's very easy to get it wrong. It's a really fun game and very replayable. The game is available on Steam. Little Nightmares is a puzzle platformer game where you play as the raincoat wearing six as they travel into hostile territory to hunt down the woman they've seen in their dreams. The game's platforming ties in directly with its puzzles and the horror comes mostly from Tim Burton-like designs of the antagonists from bloated chef to long arm creepers that will spell game over if you're caught by them. The game is available on Steam, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Switch. Little Nightmares 2 follows a different protagonist called Mono, who teams up with Six from the first game to journey through a dark city. The game features the same level of puzzles with a bigger emphasis on cinematic moments and chase sequences, with an ongoing antagonist, the Thin Man, following them. The game is available for PlayStation 4, Steam, Xbox One and Switch, but also available in a release with the first game bundled in. Penumbra is a series of three games that follows protagonist Philip as he travels to Greenland in search of his father and ends up with more than he's bargained for as he disappears into a mine shaft under the Greenland ice. The games are made by Frictional so they're very hands-on like Amnesia but have a higher focus on puzzles than Amnesia does. You really get to see the roots of what made Amnesia so good in these games. The first installment Overture has minor combat that's difficult to get on with on purpose but a near unparalleled atmosphere of isolation and loneliness that's carried onwards by the mystery of what lies below. The game is only available on Steam with its sequel in a bundle. You can't buy it separately but the bundle offer is so good that it doesn't really matter. Black Plague is the sequel and continues on from the events of Overture, removing combat and adding more enemy threats akin to Amnesia's monsters, more colourful characters and another intriguing story. Black Plague is the closest thing to the Dark Descent as it stands today. 
It's also PC only and part of the same bundle digitally. Physically, it's available on its own, though you can get it with the Penumbra Collection, which contains Overture and the puzzle game sequel, Requiem. Amnesia Rebirth is the direct sequel to Amnesia The Dark Descent and follows Tassie Trianon as she lands in a plane crash in the Algerian desert, but recalls some kind of terrible event that took place before she awoke that she can't quite remember, and finds a mysterious amulet on her wrist. As the game progresses, she realises she's pregnant and the body horror slips in. The game is similar to The Dark Descent, but it's longer and has a higher focus on story, but it still has several puzzles with the biggest change being that you can't really die in the game, with failure setting you back but changing very little. The game is available digitally on PlayStation 4, Steam and Xbox One. Phasmophobia is an early access multiplayer horror game where you and your friends explore haunted houses to identify ghosts that lurk within, or die trying. The game features the same sort of deduction as Mortuary Assistant with you using journals to compare the paranormal events to. <gasps> with the addition that you can use investigation tools like ultraviolet lights, microphones, projectors, and other things to help deduct the right ghost. The horror comes from how hostile the ghost can be and they're presented well enough to feel genuine, even though sometimes it feels like nothing much happens at all, it's luck of the draw. The game is only available on PC at the moment, though the development team have stated their intentions to bring it to console. The game is available on Steam. Forewarned is similar to Phasmophobia with arguably more content. It's early access too, but heading towards its 1.0 release. The game follows the premise of identifying specific Egyptian horrors as you look in the... The game follows the premise of identifying specific Egyptian horrors as you loot their tombs. The caveat is that once you identify the monster and grab the artifact, you must leave alive whilst the monster manifests and chases you. The game follows a lot of the same premises as Phasmophobia and it's down to your personal taste, but I find myself enjoying Forewarned a lot more than Phasmophobia. The game is available on Steam. Finally, there's Sanitarium, which is a point-and-click game where you play as Max, who's lost his memory and awoken in a sanitarium where he meets strange people and witnesses bizarre and horrifying things. There's a lot of unpleasantness in the game and it goes off on surreal tangents on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter basis. The game's puzzles can be a little obtuse and some obstacles are full of strange logic, but it's an incredibly weird game that only gets weirder the more it ages. The game is PC only and available on Steam and GOG digitally and physically for quite a lot more depending again if you just get the CD case or the whole big box. Finally we've got the last portion of the video where I'm going to talk about games that are more about stories and making choices. This is if you like Amnesia and Machine for Pigs and prefer to focus more on the story. First up, there's Outlast, which puts you in the shoes of investigative journalist Miles Upshur as he infiltrates the Mount Massive Psychiatric Hospital, in time to find the patients have overrun the place and he's outnumbered and very much alone trying to find his way out. The game focuses more on hiding from enemies and running away, which leads to some great chase sequences. The game doesn't really have puzzles and focuses more on the horror. It can be bought on its own on PlayStation, Xbox and Steam digitally. It can also be purchased digitally with its excellent DLC, Whistleblower, as part of the Bundle of Terror on Switch, Xbox and PlayStation, though seemingly not in the UK for PlayStation. And finally, it can be bought physically with the Outlast Trinity Bundle on PlayStation and Xbox, though Outlast Trinity is only available digitally on PlayStation. Oh boy. Outlast 2 follows cameraman Blake as he and his wife crash in a valley filled with deranged cults where his wife is kidnapped by one of them and he must travel through the rural valleys and desolate villages as well as his own past to retrieve her. The game is more open-ended but still follows the same basic premise as the original game, though with a higher focus on gore. It's available digitally on Steam, PlayStation, Xbox and Switch and physically again as part of the Outlast Trinity bundle. No One Lives Under the Lighthouse is a cosmic horror game about a lighthouse keeper sent to a remote island to replace a previously missing keeper. 
The game gives you simple tasks to do whilst the ongoing mysterious threat builds, and you witness bizarre and horrifying things until it goes off the deep end and you have to delve underneath the lighthouse yourself. A brilliantly weird game. It's available on Steam and Nintendo Switch. Soma is a first-person sci-fi horror game where you play as Simon, who after going in for a brain scan awakens in the far future. The game is very story-focused and your decisions are extremely important. The gameplay mostly features the same running away mechanics as Amnesia, being that it's made again by Frictional Games. Though there are some small puzzles, but it's mostly just exploring and taking in the frankly phenomenal story. The PC version, like Amnesia the Dark Descent and the Bunker, has custom stories so that you can play various stories made by fans to get more out of the content. The game was released digitally on PlayStation, Xbox and PC. Layers of Fear is an exploration game where you play as a painter who returns home to find his house is a mess, and after unveiling the painting he's working on to be nothing more than a blank canvas, he leaves the room to find out that it doesn't lead to where it did before, and the mystery begins. The game is more about uncovering the story by checking out items and witnessing events, and it's pretty engaging for the way the house keeps changing and morphing and showing you new things. The game was released digitally on PlayStation, Steam, Xbox and Switch, but had a very limited physical release for PlayStation and Switch, and it's exceedingly expensive. Layers of Fear 2 is a game about playing as a method actor who loses themselves in the role and sees you travelling through the hazy lens of early cinema as you try to get to the bottom of yourself. It's a very si it's very similar to the first Layers of Fear but it's a lot more abstract. The game was released on PlayStation, Xbox, Steam and Switch digitally. Both games come mashed together in the 2023 remake, confusingly titled Layers of Fear. Doki Doki Literature Club is a visual novel psychological horror game where you play as a teenage boy who is dragged into joining a book club by his friend, and the game plays off the trope of a dating sim where you spend time with the different girls, allows you to get to know them better, and as it turns out, they're all hiding something dark and it boils to the surface in an extremely disturbing way the further you get into the game. It's free on Steam, with the extended version Doki Doki Literature Club Plus having more content, higher resolution images, extra music, and loads of bonuses. That's available on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and of course PC, if you're interested. Finally, we have the Dark Pictures games, The Quarry, and Until Dawn. They're all interactive movie-like games where you can guide characters through scenarios and make decisions on the way to guide the story to its conclusion. Characters live or die based on your choices and it's down to either things you choose or quick time events to decide what path the story takes. The best game is easily Until Dawn which is a PS4 exclusive. It follows a group of friends as they reunite on a mountain a year after the death of their two friends, but they find things have changed and soon they're concerned by sounds coming from the woods and a mysterious man who's following them. The game is sadly a PlayStation 4 exclusive, but they are working on a remake, and let's hope that it gets a wider release this time. To keep out strangers. Hey. What? Hey. What the hell? You just got mucked. The quarry follows a group of camp counsellors as they're left behind at the camp and witness bizarre things in the surrounding woods before realising that they should have gone home when they could have. The game is available on Steam, PlayStation and Xbox consoles. The Dark Pictures Anthology follows several stories and characters in episodic format, with Man of Medan featuring some teenagers on a diving trip being kidnapped by pirates and then trapped on a seemingly haunted boat. Little Hope features a school trip that leads to a bus crash in a strange town that transports them back to the Witchfinder days where they find versions of themselves. Cool 
House of Ashes, which takes place in the Afghanistan war, when some soldiers searching for an underground cache find an old tomb that they get trapped in. And finally, Devil in Me, which sees a film crew travelling to a mysterious island where a reclusive man has recreated a hotel used by the famous American serial killer H.H. H. Holmes to catch his victims. These games are all very similar to Until Dawn and The Quarry, but are usually shorter, and some include different mechanics. They are all highly... They are all slightly different prices and released on Steam, Xbox and PlayStation, but for the sake of brevity I'm going to let you know that you can buy all of them together in the Season 1 bundle on Xbox and PlayStation, but on Steam they're all sold separately. And that's it. I've covered quite a few games here and I hope this video has helped you in some way. I am very tired, but I'm going to leave a pinned comment and if you want me to do a follow up for more obscure games, Leave a like on the comment and sometime after this year's Halloween, I'll do another one. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget all the reviews are in the description, and thanks for watching. Peace.